Hey, a pleasant, happy day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Drew Borick, and we're here for even in a lockout, a baseball edition podcast. Uh, we'll talk about maybe a little bit on the JB and Steel show that we do tomorrow, some of the international signing teams made that were very good during the lockout. But today we're here to talk about the Hall of Fame and how uh, we think the balloting is going and what we would think and put our two cents in if we had decisions to vote. Um, but still, first and foremost, before we get into it, how are you doing on this Sunday? I'm doing just fine, just fine. Thank you. Um, it the sun's going down and the temperatures going down and the snow's starting to come down. So all the things are coming down. But hey, man, we're looking up because we got all kinds of cool things to talk about here with the great Joe Bory. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yep, yep, yeah, definitely appreciate you hopping on. There's a lot of interesting things to talk about from uh, Andrew Jones being a guy in the Hall of Fame that seems to get, or not in the Hall of Fame, but in the ballot that seems to not get enough recognition at time. And you could definitely throw um, a second baseman that came before the Pedroyas, the Utleys, the Kindlers of the world, and Jeff right. Kent fits into that category just because he was, quite frankly, just because he was an ass to the media. Uh, is probably why he doesn't get the Hall of Fame voting he should. Uh, uh, you know. yeah. Where uh, I don't really think th- 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 I don't really think we, we could start there because I don't really think there's only when it comes to a regular character if if it's to a degree we'll get to Kurt Schilling later. That, that That's a completely different conversation. But the character clause when it just comes to oh maybe he pissed you off as a media person that to me can't be a reason for not voting for somebody that has who's doing the voting the baseball writers association so like if you're in the association and you once talked to like this man and even if you did i don't care it doesn't make a difference get off well apparently it does stop being soft like that's the the, like that's literally all Mm -hmm. it is a passing has similar opinions i wouldn't care if the guy called me an asshole if you have the numbers to be in the Hall of Fame, I'm putting you in the Hall of Fame. You could have like the Hall of Fame should be by the numbers. The Hall of Fame. There's a lot of people in the Hall of Fame that are not good people for each sport. That if you go back and look over history, you'll find a lot of bad apples in each Hall of Fame. So when yeah. it comes to just somebody that's not even a bad apple, they're just a, I want to play the game. Basically, a Marshawn Lynch of baseball. They don't really want to deal with the media. The, 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 just because they come off as sore because they don't really want to deal with you in the first place. They just want to play the game. They don't think that should really even be a part of the game. The, the, that shouldn't be a reason when you had um, uh, an 855 OPS and you were a 290 um, hitter in Jeff Kent and, and made multiple all-star games and won an MVP. He was literally the, he was only 6'1". He was like, that's why I said Kinsley Pedroia. He was like, them before them because he was a smaller second baseman that was still finding ways to hit home runs. He had 377 in his career at a above 55 war. All those numbers equate to Hall of Fame. Well, for him, I think he'll get in towards the back end because once you get towards the end, people will eventually go, okay, the numbers, well, we have to put him in for the numbers. We can't say at this point, okay, he wasn't the best to the media we didn't like his interviews we can't not put him in for that now because otherwise he's going to fall off the ballot like right. normally towards the end eventually people uh reconcile and they say okay we're just going to vote him in but 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 with baseball it also becomes a moot point because jeff kent i think if he never gets in from the writers is going to get in from the veterans committee anyway and he'll be one of those people that the veterans committee looks at the writers and goes you are a bunch of obnoxious idiots for not voting this but which there's been a couple people already that I think the Veterans Committee's looked at them and going, why the heck did we have to vote this guy in? You should have done this years ago. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's one of those things where, look, unfortunately, these votes are going to be political. The, unfortunately, I mean, whether they are or not, it's going to appear that way because these guys are writers does that make sense you know what i'm saying so when you have writers that are the ones that are basically voting you in that's why i liked the like it was howard bryan i think his name's dave devito it was either dan or dave and then it was passed and they were on this one show i watched with rose 
they talked about how that shouldn't have an effect though. Politics have no play. I know it should. But, but if you now, if you go to the degree, like I said, we'll get to if you go to that degree, that might be a different conversation. But like, if you're somebody that just is different in a degree of you don't respect the way they live life compared to the way you live life. That shouldn't be a reason to why you don't vote somebody into the Hall of Fame. Like they would have to do oh, an no, act, I, like me, I agree. heinous th- or something that is why, like Omar Vizquel, sexual harassment and all that. He shouldn't be voted in the Hall of Fame. He's still on the ballot. That's why he fell off, keeps falling down because he's an idiot and has committed criminal acts off the field that he's been accused of. That's completely different than than just being a doofus that in terms of talking to the media because you're all about the sport. The, 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 that's my thing there where, like, Marshawn Lynch, he probably has close to, if not NFL accolades, to be close to Ken. So his, you're probably getting this conversation with him eventually, too. Is his voting affected I'd have by... i to look. Yeah, is I'd his have to voting, look. Yeah, is his voting going to be affected by the fact that he was not really a media person at all? So. Okay, well then, I mean... And baseball's the hardest Hall of Fame. I, I, I like to get in the most because you only have the ten year. Most of them you have the continuous. You can still get in over time. Like where yeah. you have the ten year fall off, which I agree with people that say hockey and basketball, especially sometimes you get guys in more just because of their chips and not necessarily because of their accolades and their overall statistics. But like I would rather have that problem didn't have too many people not get in yeah. that have been talked about over the years that 100% should be in the Hall of Fame. I would rather have it be reversed, like, eh, maybe this guy shouldn't be in, than have it be, well, these 17 people should probably be. The like, I would, like, Alfonso Soriano fell off the ballot. Alfonso Soriano was this a dude named Ron Racuna on the Braves now. Uh, he was a twig that hit 40 for 40. How the heck are you not in the Hall of Fame if you're a twig that hits 40 home runs and has 40 stolen bases and has 30 for 30 in other seasons? This man didn't look like he could hit it nearly as far as he as he right. like he he was a different degree. Where with him, um, I know there was rumors, but it was never proven like Sosa with the court bat thing. So you can't not vote for somebody because of rumors. If it's proven, that's one thing. Because I think that was a rumor started, and other people have said this too. Just to try to reason how a dude that small could hit a ball that well, and that was people that were haters basically trying to stir up rumors. That, that, that's honestly with Alfonso, all well, I think it was, or Sammy Sosa. We know that what he did was really good. Well, let me say this, okay? Um, the whole, you know, Sammy Sosa um, and uh, <clears throat> McGuire. Um, home run derby, the race. the race they had, and then Barry Bonds was kind of chipping in on that too, there for a little while, and he was kind of in that group of guys too. And the same thing with A Rod, right? And there's a couple, quite a few other guys on this list too, okay? And and see, and and everything that I've read so far is saying that there. A lot of the voters are very leery of guys that have um, substance, uh, you know, substance enhancing any kind of that stuff associated with their name. They they really don't want to vote on those type of guys, and they really don't want to. They, I, you know, what I mean. And so, and we're getting into that era now where a lot of these type of guys now are becoming eligible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you look at Sammy Sosa and you look at his his accolades, like just if, if you just zoom back and just look at Sammy Sosa and just look at, say, as a baseball player, like you don't add any of the inner knowings of anything. You just look back at him as a baseball player and go, wow, man. You know, look at all those, you know, batting titles he's won and blah, 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 609 home runs, holy smokes, and had a season of, of seasons and da, 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 da. And then you go, oh, yeah, well, he juiced. And then you're like, well, my issue with Sosa is more, if you use steroids, because I've watched different documentaries on it, you still have to, like, you can't just sit on your couch eating potato chips. No, 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 yeah, I know that. Yeah, like, if you're, if you're, if you're Sosa and you court your bat, and you have all the skill in the world to just make contact, you can do that. 
okay, you can so literally just sit on your couch, eat potato chips, and smoke right. marijuana all day. And you're still going to hit to the level because as long as you make the contact on the bat, if you hit it in the sweet spot, that thing's going to the moon and back because you court your bat. That's why I don't jive with the corked bat thing where the steroids, the thing is from watching documentary stuff, I at least learned you actually have to work still. It's giving you a benefit, but you have to work to get that benefit still because if you don't work out, it yeah, doesn't like, do anything for you. Yeah, where yeah, court yeah. Bat, all you have to do is make contact on the sweet spot. I mean, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to make a comparison. Okay. I, get, I, I, yeah, I wasn't trying to make a comparison. What I'm trying to say is that any player that's had any kind of substance uh, substance enhancing, um, performance enhancing, or anything like that that's associated with their name or any kind of off the field issue like corked bats or, you know, other criminal issues and things of that nature. That's a different story as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? I, I, I really don't, I really can't. I mean, it's, I understand that it's, it's kind of like, it's almost like, well, OJ Simpson was already in the Hall of Fame, and then he did some bad things. Yeah, you don't remove somebody once they're in. You can take their plaques down and stuff, but you don't remove them once they're in. Yeah. Terrell Owens went into the Hall of Fame, but he wasn't there for any of the ceremony or anything like that. So no, he yeah. wasn't, right? But he's still in the Hall of Fame. Do you, you know what I mean? So he can still go around saying he's a Hall of Fame player. But... It, that's kind of the thing here, what I think is going on. And I think a lot of the writers, and now because a lot of these guys are, I mean, let, let's face it, some of these guys are in their 10th year because of the fact that they were performance enhancing or because they had other off the field oh, issues field. Was tied the -field to their issues. name that is preventing them from getting into the Hall of Fame. And you know what? I don't necessarily have a problem with that because I. <sighs> I kind of look at it as cheating. My thing is the guy that got in, I growing up looked at it as I wouldn't vote for steroid guys. As soon as Bud Seelig, as soon as he retired and they immediately worked to enshrine him in the Hall of Fame, it changed my opinion on things because he's the one that was the guy that caused the, the caused the effect. There's a cause to an effect and Rob Manfred and Bud Seelig were the cause of the steroid era. They, they they allowed it to happen and they let it make the money because baseball was going to fall flat on its face like it's doing right now. Would have happened in the late nineties if um if it didn't if it didn't come to Sosa, McGuire, uh, Bonds, and having all these guys, the Rafael Palmeros of the world. If it didn't come to guys being really good and showcasing, baseball would have fell flat on its face back then. So they allowed it to happen. They were complicit in all of that. And then all of a sudden go, oh, we got to punish these people now. Oh, my God. When you're the same person that allowed it to happen so you could make your bread and you could make the owner's bread. That's the problem I have once they throw you in the Hall of Fame immediately. You were also complicit in a guy like Tim Raines who took a minute to get into the Hall of Fame because you barred him from baseball and blackballed him back yeah. in the 90s. So you were complicit in that. And you were complicit in multiple tanks allowing that to happen, which people got mad at David Stern in the NBA for when he was a commissioner there and allowing tank jobs to happen. You got to get mad at Seelig for the same thing. So, uh, y y like, he was complete. And there's more you can go on about with Bud Seelig. But, like, the fact that he got in trying so quickly, he allowed it to happen. The, it was an era in baseball that's not the most great history. But the fact of the matter is, since they allowed it to happen, those players still theoretically became the best players of their time because that's what you allowed them to do. So in the end, if it's nobody 30, 40, 50 years from now, this is what you got to think about too when you're voting for the Hall of Fame baseball history. None of our kids are going to be going, oh, well, he took steroids. He shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. They're going to be going, why in God's creation is the guy that's the all-time home run leader not in the Hall of Fame? Why is the guy that was considered the rocket that might by some over Koufax and others be considered the best pitcher of all time in Roger Clemens, just because, especially with him, because he only took, which is known, at the end of his career to stay with yeah. the path. So yeah. that's a completely different, but, but yeah. um, like, why is he not in the hall? If it, like, that's where it goes to me at this point. If they put Seal again, that's complicit in so much. He allowed the star radio to happen. I don't want the history of baseball in the future to be 
how is the guy that that's one of, known as one of the best in this position not in years down the line? Because nobody at that point is going to be thinking about this steroid garbage. They're just going to be thinking about what you have as a sheet of paper, as the, like what you have on here as your resume, and they're yeah. going to be going, this dude should be in. And when it comes to thinking about it as somebody that loves the history of the sport and everything, yeah, it's a tarnished history, but it's because of the commissioners allowing it to happen. Therefore, like other writers have said that I've listened to, I think you should at this point just say, screw it, because they didn't give us any guidelines. Or Pete Rose, they said you can't vote him in. Uh, with the with others, with the Veterans Committee and everything they said with the Black Sox scandal, like all those people are barred. You can't do anything with those people way back. So yeah, like, yeah. Um, they never gave him a guideline with the steroid people. And since they put um, Seligan right away, it makes me go, well, the, the, they still are some of the better guys. If you look at um, McGuire, um, he probably would have been the way that his prospect card was. And I don't know if he started taking steroids young in college and stuff, but the yeah, way right. he, if you look at his scouting report, he graded like Bob Costas, who's a baseball story. So when he puts something like this, that yeah. is more to being maybe a harm and kill a brew type Hall of Famer. So, like, yeah. you have guys, and that's also why I think McGuire decided to be, not just because he loves the game, but because he wanted to be in the public eye, why he also is a coach now, because it puts you in the public eye more for the Veterans Committee and so forth, so they know you're giving back to the game, and then they're like, well, Mark's been giving back to the game for 20 years. Maybe we should put him in the hall. So it, it does give you more merit. That's also, right. I think a rod yeah, because... is doing his, uh, his TV stuff, which he ain't getting in first ballot, but like he's doing his TV stuff because he's actually polling better than I thought he would at first ballot where I thought he would be more down in the teens to, to, to smaller twenties on the first ballot and really have to work his way up. But, uh, he's actually polling in the, in the 40.7 right now with about 46% in. So, uh, he's doing better than I thought. So, I think that's what changed my opinion, the fact that they were so quick to put the guy in that caused everything. Um, and he's the one that allowed it to keep happening to make everyone's bread and make everybody happy and bring the sport back. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, why, that's why I would still put these guys in because th the history was they revived the sport, even if they did it in a little bit of a tarnished way. The other point that guys point out is they didn't start testing until after they did the survey testing where even Big Poppy came up on one of the survey testing, but it wasn't proven. That stuff's not proven because it's a survey where that's why they started testing because enough people failed that. There's probably a boatload of people in the Hall of Fame, honestly, that took performance enhancers before they started caring about it. So that's the flip side of the... Of the of well, I would say that that's probably the case in every sport. In every sport, but, but because I, they I, didn't realize, they didn't realize that certain things were performance enhancing to an extent. They didn't realize that it was something that they needed to test for, or something that could, you know, whatever, whatever, give people an unfair advantage and things of that nature. That's why I think it was really slow for all of like the Olympic committees, even like baseball. Um, even to this day, some of the professional leagues like NBA and stuff like that are still kind of not really testing for that kind of stuff, but they do punish it if they find it, you know, yeah, they I mean, don't they're out and, and openly, if they have suspicion, that's when they, um, start testing. But the MLB to me, they're, they're one of the more strict because you have guys that are coming back and something a doctor prescribed, that's just a normal, whatever that they would given someone recovering from whatever the surgery yada yada is. and then that's why they are on the performance enhancing drugs list because it's something their doctor prescribed and it's and it's actually on the controlled substance list for whatever reason with, with, with the mlb that's just something like like multiple players have got put on their controlled substance penalties just because of that and that's why baseball i also look at differently because you have guys that are just doing what they think their doctor's telling them to do, and then it turns out to be... Like, like Carlos Ruiz was like that, the one Phillies catcher. Like, they yeah. think that that stuff's on the control list. But for me, it's more just the premise of once Sealy got in and he was the one that caused everything, that made me go... They were still the guys that saved the game. And also, my thing was, once I started watching all those different on Netflix and, like, Screwball and all the other different steroid do documentaries about the steroid era, it made you learn that you can't just take them and be a lazy 
sack of crap. You actually have to. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So like it, where with a cork and a bat, that's why even the rumors probably didn't allow Alfonso to get in. And the fact that uh, Sosa didn't do it or did do it, excuse me, that's why he pulls so much lower than other guys that are accused of the steroid thing, because you still have to work more with the steroids where a cork mm-hmm. and bat. You just yeah. have to be a God-given talent with the hand-eye coordination. And once you hit that, that sucker's going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> going. Yeah, exactly. But, exactly. So, okay, well, so then do you – I mean, I, I know there's – what do you do you need to get above 75% in order to get into the – to get voted yeah, in? 75 yeah. 75%, okay. So, all right. Well, there's some guys that have some room to make, and there's some guys that are already past that. Now, like, I'm going to ask us this question. David Ortiz is at 83.6% with only about 46% of the voting in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, with him being that high already and only 46% of the vote in, is the chance of him making it in okay, or is he not going to make it? I would say they're in a pretty good spot, but I mean, people have said there is a chance we could get back to back years of um, it being nobody if the second half of the ballot comes in and people are in the negative for Bonds and the negative for Clemens. And then it's more this is Ortiz's first year, so they don't put him in in the first ballot and he dips off in the second half. But Ortiz would be the one of all the three that I would be the most comfortable yeah. thinking that he's going to stick and be able to have at least one guy as a player be part of the yeah. 2022 class uh, between mm-hmm. uh, Clemens and between bonds. Like he's a guy where his percentage is at, that I would be the most comfortable saying, I feel he'll stick around. Right. I got you. Stay up and then him. after the 10 year, uh, after the 10 year on the ballot, then um, you have to be voted in by the veterans committee, which happens years later when they can, they convene. A, I forget how many years in separation, but they convene every X amount of years to okay. to vote right. people in um, that, quite frankly, I think uh, in some cases they just think that the writers are dumb for not having voted in before. <laughs> I mean, at least there's a second chance round yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Well, it's different because it's literally a veterans committee. So you then have the players that go, well, this dude has the equivalency of stats of me and I'm in the Hall of Fame. So if they're telling me that I shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, then uh then i'm gonna vote this guy in the hall so <laughs> it's like how oh, I, yeah uh, like for uh, example i think barry larkin might be on or was on the veterans committee at least um at one time i thought with uh baseball where barry larkin's the guy when people look at jimmy rollins who this is his first year on the ballot right when look at j-roll they say his stats are actually better than larkin's and larkin's in the hall of fame so if Barry has a say in that, then he if, if he never gets in by the writers, Barry might be yeah. like, well, this dude has stats at least as good as mine, if not better, just because yada, yada, yada doesn't mean he shouldn't be in the hole. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has the home runs. Like, he was one of the best home run hitting shortstops and leadoff hitters. Exactly. Of so you add that degree to the Jimmy Rollins effect as well that's why for sure um it will be interesting how he moves up as years come because everyone knew he wasn't a first ballot hall of famer but heck how he moves up as years go down since this is only his first year on the ballot so. right gotcha gotcha okay all right well there you go man uh quite honestly i have a i have an issue with writers um voting for hall of fame people I really do. I have a, a problem with writers doing it for football. I have a problem with writers doing it for college football. I have a problem with writers doing it for for any sport, to be honest with you. Um, but if that's how they do it, then okay, that's how they do it. There's no way around that. You know what I mean? And it's, it's unfortunate that sometimes you're going to get some of those guys who are going to get that – Get well, that thing, you know, thank you. They're going to get that thing where, you know, hey, this guy wasn't all that great to me. So I might not necessarily yeah. be that quick to vote for him. Mm-hmm. No, th- no, that's entirely true. Um, 
Like, for example, the one guy I have that I met at the Phillies Wall of Fame thing that I have his autographed picture over there, Bobby Abreu. Bobby Abreu is in the land of very good players throughout his career. I wouldn't say he's in the land of would vote for him in the Hall of Fame. Now, if there's a weak class, I told this to my friend yesterday, I would be somebody that wants to try to put out 10 if I could, since you can vote for 10. I would want to try to vote for 10 on each ballot. So it actually made it look like I was giving effort and I wasn't one of those people that put two people on it or, or one person where it looked like I thought about it for seven tenths of a second and went, OK, here we go. And then just and then just uh, gave it to the league office. Like, so I would try to put if there was a weaker ballot, which is not this one, and he stayed on it, then maybe he would be like my 10th person just to have a 10th person or a ballot, but I don't see Bobby Abreu ever getting in, in the Hall of Fame where, where, where Jimmy Rollins is more, he might start at 12%, 13, 15, whatever, but then move up to 25, 27, move up to 37, then keep progressively moving up uh, as the time goes on, where Howard's going to fall off, where the reason for Ryan Howard, who's on it this year, is going to fall off like Victorino did when he was first on it with the Phillies. Howard's different than Victorino. Victorino was just because he's in the land of very solid players as well, and just not a Hall of Fame player. He just got nominated for the ballot. But Howard's because of the Achilles. If Ryan Howard never busted his Achilles in that one playoff series, he probably would have had a couple more years that were equivalent to Ryan Howard's earlier number. And then you would have been talking at least about there being much more of a case for him to be on the ballot for years to come rather than going one year off. There's no way you would have been a one-year-off guy if that Achilles injury, in my eyes, uh, didn't happen. Your sound's out right now. I agree with you 100%. Um, so I, I think uh, that's, you know, I, well, I agree let, with that. All right. Well, the one guy, too, where people will be surprised I say this because I didn't love his personality during the time here in Philadelphia, but he was really good in Boston, and he did, he is our all-time saves leader. Just didn't like his interviews. Uh, <laughs> well, a, you know, a, hey. <laughs> a guy that I don't think should fall off first ballot, along with Joe Nathan, because multiple people have talked about it, these two righties have just, uh, just were just dogs that you didn't want to face when they were at their peak, is Papelbon. Him and Nathan, right. they shouldn't fall. I don't know if they ever would make it, but falling off in your first year when you had multiple hitters talk about you as, like, they instill the fear of God in me. Like, that's that's not typically someone I want falling off in the first year. But yeah, no, I'm with you. There's <laughs> one I would say uh, we, we can give. I'll give the 10 people that um, I would think uh, we'll get in. A guy that I'm hoping actually gets over the 5% just to keep him stay on the ballot um, because I always liked him in his career as a workhorse is Mark Burley, the lefty that was once on the uh, White Sox. I don't think he'll ever get in, but he's a guy was uh, between a three to a one, depending what team he was on, but would always step up, Was a, would make those crazy fielding plays. Uh, he's a guy I would be happy to see just last on the ballot. But uh, for me, obviously, first and foremost, somebody I would vote for uh, – would be David Ortiz because David Ortiz was one of the not 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 just greatest players of the game, but one of the greatest personalities of the game. So he does have the double thing going for him in the positive, uh, where he has one of the greatest personalities and one of the greatest players. Um, Roger Clemens, he did have some stuff happen later, but again, I've talked about it earlier. When you're considered the Rocket, plus his is a completely different case. He did it to last with guy at like the age of thirty-seven to forty-two, yeah. uh, but like. When you're when you're just a ridiculous pitcher like that, and you are regarded as one of the best, or even yeah. some as the best, I think you have to um, yeah. be voted in the Hall of Fame. Another for me that's kind of like a Matt Statman OP type player, or Matt Chapman OP type player that's with the A's is Scott Roll, and he's a great fielder first, but was a very good hitter that had a couple elite level RBI and home run production seasons. So just because of how good he was as a fielder, there's guys like obviously Ozzy, the wizard that are in more for their fielding and then hitting second, but were still very solid hitters in their own right. And if Omar Vizquel wasn't a criminal, that's also why he would get voted in because he was trending that way. And then we found out what he did. So that's why he fell uh, off the ballot. He was a defense first rather than a, uh, than a, a hitter first type guy. So I think Roland, um, should get in another guy for me. It's his tenth year on the ballot. Again, I talked about it when once Manfred, uh, or not Manfred, once uh, 
Sealig immediately got in um, by Rob Manfred and the rest of the league for stuff he's been complicit in as well as Manfred. Uh, once you are a part of a baseball history that helped save the game and Barry Bonds and helped recover the game, it's his 10th year on the ballot. I feel like he'll get in by the Veterans Committee anyway. Uh, so I would uh, put him in on the 10th year. Somebody I loved his entire career that I would definitely put on. And he was good at hitting outside of Coors Field, so I don't want to hear the whole from people. Oh, well, he played in the Colorado Rockies. Uh, is, is Todd Heldon, just like Larry Walker. They were both just good. Didn't matter that they played for the Rockies. They were both just good players. Yeah. So, uh, both of them deserve to be in. Walker, of course, got in a bit late. It looks like Heldon, with the way he's trending, will probably getting quicker um, than Larry. So that's five people. Obviously, I would put my uh, guy uh, Jimmy Rollins on there, knowing he wouldn't get in in his first year. But like somebody, I would vote for him to keep him on the ballot. Yep. Um, Jeff Kent, I talked about. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of the show, so people already probably insinuated that I would be voting for him. Somebody for sure. that uh, needs to get more recognition is Andrew Jones, because this dude was one of the best hitters for six to, it depends what you look at at the seventh season, but maybe even seventh season. And some people's arguments is, well, his fielding peak was greater than his hitting peak. Well, great. There's multiple people in the Hall of Fame for how great they were at fielding and then hit it. So you can put him in for either reason because he was one of the best hitters for six, for six <laughs> years. So, like, like for him, it, it, the, the argument literally makes no sense for him not exactly. to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And then uh, wrapping up, uh, the other guy would be, I would say, because he pitched with his off arm. I understand his playoff stats are not great, but that factors into different things other than just yourself. Um Wagner ended up getting injured as a young kid. He was supposed to be right-handed. He ended up pitching left-handed and was still a Hall of Fame level guy. Billy Wagner here. Yeah. So I have to vote a guy in when you didn't even pitch in the big with the hand you were born to pitch with, and you still did it to that level. Exactly. Where my hand spot uh, would be tough because I have Ortiz, Clemens, Roland, Bonds, Heldon, Rollins, Kent, Jones, and Wagner to review for people because – the other thing, on top of what Shielding's done off the field, the other reason why I wouldn't vote for him in his last year is he basically told you not to. <laughs> last year when he came out after the quotes, he said, I don't yeah. want to be voted. I don't, I don't respect the writers. I want to go to the Veterans Committee. That's Yeah, I was just going to say, and, yeah. Like, even if it, if it was just that reason, I wouldn't want to vote him in for that reason because he's told you himself to, to, to let it go to the Veterans Committee. So that would rule out – Kurt Schilling. I and then I would be between Gary Sheffield because I always liked the obviously Sheffield did the uh, that's who I was gonna <laughs> yeah that's who I was gonna uh, that's who that's, I was gonna say yeah yeah I would be Manny it would be do I want to pick between Jeff has rumors of being involved in stuff Manny of course actually has the steroid uh connection so it would be between one of those two where the, the, that's kind of where I ended up with nine and then I end up between flipping a coin, I guess, between Manny Ramirez or Gary Sheffield because it's neither of their last years. So eventually, if I did have a vote, one of them would that, that didn't get on this year would get on a different year and vice versa. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, I like that list. I, I'm off for that list. Um, I, I don't even disagree with that list at all. Not one little bit. I mean, you make a lot of good, valid points about why guys need to be there and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm good with that list too, man. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there's certain guys that are going to get in if they don't get in via the writers by the veterans anyway. Like Bonds, even with the Surrey connection, will get in for being the home run leader by the veterans committee. I firmly believe if he doesn't get in by the BBWA. Yeah. So, like, uh, there's certain guys. Clemens, I think, will get in by the veterans committee too if he doesn't get yeah. in by the BBW. So, there's certain guys that will get in, but that's just the list of where. I would go with it. I really thank you, Steele, for joining to help be you the bet, great man. Anytime, bro. and uh, steerer of the direction guy are on here. <laughs> well, you know, hey, what can I say? Um, listen, if you guys aren't listening to the Professor Joe, that's why we call him the Professor, um, because he is the pro Joe. He knows it all, and he knows more about things that we've forgotten. So if you haven't checked him out, man, you got to follow him out. Uh, you got to check him out on the YouTube. You got to check him out doing all his great writing, uh, all his great stuff he does for Flyers Nitty Gritty. I mean, all the great stuff he does for hockey, plus everything he does for Sports Fanatic News, everything he does with JB and Steel Show with, with Steel Flyers. So thank you, Joe. Joe, very much, man, for all the work you do, man. Keep rocking it, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. And uh, right back at you, definitely check out Steel Stuff at Steel Flyers and SteelFlyers.com for all the great stuff he does with Lance, Pirlo, Peyton, of course, John from Off the Wall Hockey, and so on. 
and so forth with the plethora of people involved with the Steel Flyers family and the Flyers Nitty Gritty family. We thank you for joining us for this MLB Hall of Fame edition podcast. Uh, we'll see on the 25th what the results are. Hopefully we at least have one person for the class and not a offer like last <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Stay safe, and hopefully the lockout is over soon to add to the great news of not just Hall of Fame news, but also hopefully knowing we're going to be playing some baseball news. For Peace sure. out, everyone.